Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our very final JSA TV episode interview of the day and, in fact, of the entire show. So we're here live streaming from DCD, Virginia, just right outside of Data Center Alley. We could almost walk to Data Center Alley from here. So we're in Leesburg, outside of Washington, D.C., and I'm very excited to be joined by an, an industry and in, in, well-known industry personality, shall we say, mm. um, who has his own podcast, the QTS Experience. Um, so very happy to have you on the other side of the conversation now for, yeah. for this quick little uh, interview here. So welcome, David. Thanks for joining us. My great pleasure. I, I love how you strategically did this. You said to make me feel better, it's at the end of the event, but it's really lunchtime. <laughs> yeah. And I like how they coordinated. They were like, look, let's have that guy go last. He yeah. can have whatever's left over, but if he goes first, it's going to impact our productivity. So thank you. So, and you're also, so not only are you our last interviewee interview of the day or of yeah. the show, but you're also one of the last panels of the events, right? So 4 I p.m. Am. You're on one of the panels. So go yeah. check out David on that panel. Yeah. Um, if you're here, if you're watching live, yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you for joining us. We're going to chat a little bit. Well, I should say who you are. You're VP of Innovation at QTS Data Centers. That's right. Probably everybody watching already knows that, yeah. but just for the audience. Yeah. Um, and so we'll just dive right in. So okay. you all at QTS, of course, are experiencing tremendous growth. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we're seeing the headlines all the time out of your newsroom over there. So what strategies are you finding effective in maintaining a cohesive culture considering all of that growth? Man, you know, it's a great question. Um, I don't know if I would use the word strategy. So I'm one of the original employees there. Um, and I wish we could be as strategic as strategic. We, we really have been in the last number of years. But in the beginning, what we found, because we're, we're such a wide range of people, our founders from the Midwest, um, our first big data center that we that we based operations and sales out of is from uh, the Atlanta metropolitan area, very different area. Um, the original uh, sales and technology leaders came from Nebraska, and so we had this we had this group of people that were from different backgrounds, some with internet experience, this is in the mid early 2000s, some with uh, telecom, all these variety of things. What we found that we had in common um, was that we really aligned to mission and purpose. Well, that's, I'm a ex army airborne guy. We have lots of people that have never been in the military, but what we find um, that resonates probably in the industry as well, but in particular in our organization, is that people that can rally around an idea that's bigger than themselves, which sounds ridiculous when you're talking about data centers, but really we genuinely believe, obviously we try to express that to our customers, we try to express that to our employees, we try to express that to our investors, but to the community around us. Mm -hmm. And so when you have that, I'm a pretty earnest person, a lot of people that are, and I have a healthy dose of skepticism. Mm -hmm. So if you're a cynic, this is not gonna resonate with you. <laughs> but, but when you, you know, for us, as we've grown, our technology's changed dozens of times. The, the, the how we build data centers, where we build data centers, those sorts of things have changed. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you really do rally around serving, so we come out of the co-location business, which was focused primarily on IT mm -hmm. within a data center. So you had to learn not only the technologies, but where it's a very high touch and the operate operative word in that is service. You mm -hmm. learn to serve. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a strategy. It wasn't a plan. It was just in our DNA. Mm -hmm. And when you learn to serve, um, even though it looks more like a real estate and a development company now, that's our history. Yeah. And so when you learn to empower your employees, we have a core values that we live up to, or we attempt to live up to. That's mm -hmm. our goal. And even when we fail on occasion, mm -hmm. we don't fail in the macro, but we might in the micro not always live up to our best version of ourselves, just as we do as human beings. Yeah. But that is our rallying cause. And so mm -hmm. it's allowed us to attract a diverse group of people, a diverse group of technologists, non-traditional to the what data center looked like 20 years ago. Yeah. And they stick. And so whether it's somebody like me who's been there for 20 years or some of our new people that have come on just in the last months, people really want to be connected to something like that. And now when you do that, you find, man, my, I find my personal purpose here while I'm doing a larger thing 
Um, and it's not just about moving electrons and packets of light, which we yeah. do. And we try to do really well and spectac as efficiently as we can. So we're pretty earnest about that. I'm pretty earnest about that. But when you connect people like that, man, you, you feel like you can change a lot of things for human flourishing. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Yeah, mission purpose. I mean, this is a perfect way for us to round out um, our conversations, <laughs> I think, today on JSA TV. And also, interestingly, our very first interview this morning um, was talking about collaboration. And now mm. we're going to kind of end things with that. Okay. Um, so we'll get into... Um, uh, in your experience, mm -hmm. I know you've you've obviously worked in the industry for quite a while, um, working with different kind of um, stakeholders. Mm -hmm. um, so, how can data center owners, utilities, and local communi communities improve their communication and collaboration to ensure that everyone's priorities are aligned, everyone's needs are met, etc.? Right. Well, it's hard, <laughs> right? And the reason that's true, I think, it's just hard in general. Mm -hmm is first of all you know let's I, I think those are the right three things and those ideas were not my original ideas my buddy buddy riser who's part of economic development here at loudon uh county uh he and i just did a podcast recently but i've heard him express this idea many times and i really believe that data centers need um power mm -hmm. otherwise you're just a shed we also need connectivity and as my wife says, well, then you're just a she shed. She's got plenty of power, but no internet of which I'm trying to fix for. So you got to have those things in order to be uh, a data center. And then where you go put your data center, um, you've got to have community support. And so in order to do those things, the utilities under a lot of pressure. Data centers are under um, a lot of pressure to not only design, build, operate, and maintain an infrastructure, but it's our communities too. Like these data centers started off in our own personal communities. And we want our communities, hopefully you want your community to be sustainable and helpful for my children, my neighbors, all that. Like this has to be an aligning purpose of yours. So the very first thing you have to do is you have to engage with these yeah. folks. And you don't show up as an engineer talking about electricity or electrons or, or whatever. You show up as a human being, whether it's your utility partner, um, or your community constituents, help me to understand, This is an, these are the things I believe are an opportunity for us to engage with each other, why I think there's a mutual benefit, but help me to understand um, where you're coming from. Yeah. This is not particularly complicated, but it's not easy. Most of uh, the people, not me, but most of the people in our industry are introverts. <laughs> like we know how to do cement and we know how to do storage and we know how to do electricity safely and in a right. powerful way so nobody gets hurt right safety's number one but because things are moving so fast in the world and they're moving at such scale in some places that what happens with it's just a human condition in any doesn't even have to be technology could be education yeah. could be fill in the blank healthcare. how do we do it in a way that doesn't startle us and mm -hmm. and um and can be easily misunderstood and so organizations like ours are committed to putting, my title will shift from innovation to evangelism mm -hmm. some way, somehow, because we genuinely believe that. We first have to engage in communities um, in a wide variety of ways, whether that's a school board, whether that's a, a, a government entity, a civic organization, whatever, in a way that we first understand and then work to be understood yeah. and find it, see if we can find common ground I, we believe, obviously, I personally believe in the, in the benefit that the things of an internet or a data center bring. Mm -hmm. Think of one thing. If you think about the global GDP chart, and I don't want to just make this about economics, what industry, whether it's education, healthcare, whatever, anything that leads to human flourishing is not benefited by the internet or data. Right. All mm -hmm. are, right? There's nothing that isn't, especially as we look at sustainability and efficiencies, autonomous vehicles, safety protocols, AI to leverage to help make our things more efficient. Well, that all lives on the internet. And if that data lives on the internet, then it's got to live in a data center. Right. So how do we bring, how do we have a conversation with the people who are going to provide us the power in a, in a sustainable way and partner with them? They're not our adversaries, they're our partners. And how do we engage in a community in a way that makes sense for all of us? So first, you got to be willing to do it. You got to be willing to listen and understand yeah. and not just waiting for your turn to talk but to genuinely understand and then find a way to bring 
something to the community that makes sense for everybody, economic benefit, education benefit, like, like literally change their life. I'll give you, I know we're tight on time, but I just want to give you one example of this. A third of the world is not connected to the internet, more or less, depending upon which LLM you ask or which internet search, but, but that shocks people. But 50% of the world is not connected to broadband. Wow. There are communities in America, there's a really great video out there about the Quilt Project, where we met somebody who was a very successful technologist uh, and came back to his uh, minority community in Chicago to try to give back. And what he discovered was something that was heartbreaking. Many people in that community that are very low income to begin with have no trust of infrastructure. So it wasn't data center specific, it's just infrastructure, yeah. internet being connected. They didn't even use their phone like that. And so they would have jobs where they didn't even have online banking. They would take their check to a check, check cashing place where they took a haircut of 20 to 30% right off the top. So they're already low income. Yeah. They lost that margin and then they get robbed over and over and over because there's no understanding of the value of being connected, what it can be to your safety, to just that. It's like you just got a raise. Yeah. And and then how do you teach your children to leverage this? Like these tools are morally neutral. How do we leverage them to amplify for human good Yeah. Um, as opposed to ignore them or even worse, other people will amplify them to our detriment. So when you can, so we discovered that because we invest, not just the data center, but in the community, we do volunteer hours or whatever. And so when you're able to get the people in your organization out into the community in a real way to engage and find opportunities, we weren't giving them data center space necessarily. We're giving them infrastructure, we're funding things. And I know a lot of my frenemies are doing this as well. I'm not trying to virtue signal that this is QTS, but it just illustrates that in order for human flourishing in the economy, yeah. You have to have affordable electricity and you have to be connected. Right. Otherwise, you are trapped in poverty. It, mm -hmm. You just cannot anywhere on earth. And so we should be for that. So to engage in a community, it's not just to build data centers where we want. It's so we can help our neighbors to engage with the utility so that they can help us and engage in this. And organizations that do that sincerely from the board all the way down. And right. I will just end with this. I think all of us in our industry, there is a reason why, even though you might not be a developer of data centers, mm -hmm. you're interviewing us for this live right. thing. Why do you want to do it? There's there's the direct reason, like right. I get paid and I like being on air because you look amazing <laughs> and why wouldn't you? I look like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man <laughs> with long hair and so now I'm just entertaining people. But there's a reason why you want to do this indirectly, and there's a reason why you want to do directly. If right. all of us in this industry just could rally around that, why? You don't have to be an evangelist like me, mm. but why do I want to do this? Right. How do I influence the person to the left of me and to the right of me? Do I want to make sure that this industry that's going to grow hires right, mm. that deploys sustainably, that is good citizen, that funds the right things, that, right. Serves, up, that serves up the cloud in the correct way? We should engage in something like that, especially in a season in our country and even in the world of uncertainty and um, conflict. If we if we find a way to do this and amplify these tools to help us flourish. Right. I, I as the optimist, I believe it's going to come together. I love the optimism. Yeah, I love that. I think that's that's such an important message. And I think, you know, the, this is such a critical industry, no matter how you look at it, like you yeah. just so eloquently stated. And so I think that's a big reason why a lot of us are here today, yeah. right? Um, it's certainly a reason why I'm here is like, how do we take this industry that's so critical um, globally and, and, and do it correctly and do right by all of our yeah. communities around the world? There's no idea on earth that doesn't live in a data center. Yeah. There's no sermon. There's no sustainability report. There's no music. There's nothing. There's no um, healthcare MRI. It lives in somebody's data center. Right. That makes it spectacularly valuable real estate. And we should. And it makes it compelling for human flourishing. So let's make sure we do it and we do it well. But to come in, circling back to the question, mm -hmm. these are the constituencies. And we need to make sure that we're engaged with them in a... Um, intentional way and the people yeah. that do that will be successful and the communities will be successful and those that don't it's not just data centers will go wherever they're going to go yeah. but communities lose and yeah. they miss out 
And I just don't think that's a great way to be an American right. or, or a good citizen or a global citizen. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we have one more question. <laughs> which I told you to keep was, us under control. Th- yeah. Okay. Well, that was an amazing <laughs> answer. So actually, maybe it's better for us to just end with that. What do you think? I think... That thank was a, an amazing uh, way to kind of wrap it up. All right. Uh, thank you so much. My great David. pleasure. I'm really excited that you were able to join us today. I know you have to run off to your panel as yeah. well here soon. Yeah. So everybody, if you're watching this live, go check out the panel. Um, we will hopefully see you next time on JSA TV. All right. And thank you to all of our viewers for hanging out with us all day today while we shared some executive interviews live from the showroom floor at DCD Virginia. Happy networking, everyone. Thank you for joining us. God bless. <laughs>